chair of the Government Affairs Task Force for the Leewood Chamber of Commerce. This interview is being conducted on behalf of the Johnson County Public Policy Council, comprised of the Chambers of Commerce of Johnson County and the Greater Kansas City Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. We host a website, votejoco.com, a nonpartisan site where voters can learn more about candidates for public office. Many of the candidates we'll be interviewing have completed candidate questionnaires that can also be found on votejoco.com. Today we have with us Carl Turner, candidate for the House of Representatives in Kansas, the 28th district, covering parts of Overland Park and Leewood. Thank you, Carl, for joining us today to share with our members and visitors to votejoco.com more about you and what your priorities will be if you're elected. We want to start today's conversation by spending about three to four minutes with you telling us a little bit more about yourself and why you chose to run for the Kansas House. Carl, go ahead. Well, good afternoon and thank you uh, for the opportunity to talk with you about my campaign and why I'm the best candidate to represent District 28 in the Kansas House. Uh, I'm a lifelong Kansas City area resident. I grew up actually on the Missouri side, <clears throat> graduated from Raytown High School, and then uh, earned my bachelor's degree in accounting from the University of uh, Central Missouri in Warrensburg, and then later went back through night school and earned my master's in finance at Rockhurst College in Kansas City. Uh, I didn't grow up, as every kid would tell you, with everything <clears throat> that I wanted, but I grew up with everything that I needed. A good family, great parents uh, that both grew up on farms, one from Oklahoma and one from Atchison, Kansas. They instilled in me and my siblings a strong work ethic, personal accountability, respect for others, always doing your best. So to this day, you know, I'm still a diehard do-it-yourselfer. I mow my own lawn, do my own taxes, handle my own investments. Uh, but more importantly, I do my own thinking and arrive at my own decisions. I don't politicize my relationships. I'm not a bomb thrower or a partisan, and I don't shout people down or shut them up. I believe in fairness and tolerance with people, uh, those that disagree and those that agree. Um, I enjoy debating ideas and finding best solutions and doing what's right. You know, I love this country and I love my home here in Kansas. Uh, I've lived in this district now for 30 years, and I think I represent the people and the values and will do a great job for them in Topeka finding common sense solutions to get our economy back on track, to restore jobs, to strengthen education and improve health care and uh, build a prosperous foundation for the future of Kansas. Thank you very much. These next few questions will focus on key business issues that our members have told us are important to them. If you could spend approximately two minutes to each of these questions, that'll allow us some time at the end for you to make a closing statement. What do you see as the top three business policy issues facing the state of Kansas in the coming year? Well, uh, I'm sure, I mean, uh, that businesses would say getting the economy back and restoring jobs is probably at the top of the list. You know, it doesn't take much to drive around to the local businesses, lots of empty storefronts now. Uh, and for those that are hanging on, I'm sure things got very tight for a long while there. So. We need to do things to get things back. Uh, fortunately, we started, you know, with a full employment situation and hopefully the recovery can be fairly uh, uh, quick. Um, secondly, you know, as I've walked the district and talked to folks, you know, I've heard quite a bit about the tax burden that's on Kansans. And, uh, you know, it seems that all of the facets, whether it's income, property tax, sales tax, especially sales tax on food, um, you know, licenses, utility, so I think those same things are probably true of our businesses also, but I think the folks in the district just uh, feel like they've just about maxed out in terms of their capacity and we need to find solutions to, to uh, provide services with the money that we're taking already from the folks in, in, in view of taxes. And then, um, you know, pro promoting affordable and accessible health care is always, you know, an important thing and especially in today's times as we're looking for solutions uh, for folks. And lastly, of course, strong schools is a big draw for this area. And I would think for businesses as well uh, to get uh, a good solid um, base, um, both of consumers and of employees. So, you know, education uh, is a focus. Thank you. Great. 
Given the current economic situation that you referenced, balancing the state budget will undoubtedly be a huge task in the coming year. What specific steps do you feel are key to balancing the state budget? Well, this um, <clears throat> kind of gets back to that first question. And I, I know that we're going to have some revenue shortfalls because of the stay at home orders and the business closures for so long. Um, the state didn't take in the, all the tax revenues and the other sources. So, um, you know, I will look, as I mentioned, <clears throat> first to find what more can we do with the things that we already have? You know, what are, um, I don't know, just take an approach similar to what the folks do every day. You sit around the kitchen table, you look at where the money's going, prioritize your needs, you know, what things do you absolutely have to have and what things can you stop? Um, you know, that's the process, as I said in my responses, that Topeka should follow, is rather than go knocking and asking for more tax dollars, let's make sure that um, there's accountability and we're getting the maximum that we can, that we've got metrics in place to measure success for those dollars. And, um, you know, that's, that's really where it's at. Of course, uh, a large piece of the budget and of property taxes are going to K through 12 schools, you know, and that is, uh, you know, something that's been a big topic of debate over past years. So I don't know that that's going to be an area that we can do a whole lot in because that's important spending as well. So. Thank you. Well, that leads right into the next question. Can you share with us your views on K-12 education funding in our state? Sure. Um, you know, I'm a big supporter of education. Um, I know that schools are one of the top things, as I mentioned earlier, that draw people to this district. Um, you know, residents are understandably proud of their schools, pay a lot of dollars and taxes for those schools. And I think uh, they deserve, you know, to get a high quality education product for those dollars. So my focus will be on ensuring that those dollars are spent and used efficiently um, to provide education to the kids. Because that's really at the end of the day what I as a parent wanted and I'm sure all others is everything's great, but the education that my child receives is, is the first and foremost thing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What type of economic development policies will you support to encourage job growth and business expansion in Kansas? Well, I think as I put in my written answers, you know, I'm a, I'm a data and a numbers kind of a guy. I um, background in finance and accounting. You know, if I'm presented with a business case that makes sense, that looks like it's gonna provide benefits beyond cost and have a relatively um, meaningful payback period, then, then I would uh, be listening for any opportunities uh, in those areas. Thank you. What are your views on healthcare policy and Medicaid expansion in Kansas? Um, well, I know this has been much debated, and um, of course, you know the expansion of health. Or, I'm sorry, the expansion of Medicaid kind of got its start back at the ACA in 2010, as they were trying to <clears throat> provide insurance coverage to all was the stated objective, and uh, for these folks you know, raising the, the line for Medicare coverage uh, was an option and it's one that Kansas has not yet taken. And, you know, my nature is uh, to look for solutions. And honestly, I'm still listening for this, but my nature of course is not to take on a brand new entitlement for these folks. I obviously want to find a solution, um, you know, and I'm open to that. Uh, I'd really, uh, once, I get there, I'd like to understand fully the nature of services provided to these people, what the uh, outlets are for those services in some of the rural areas, and see if we can't come up with something uh, other than expanding Medicare and putting that additional billion dollar entitlement, especially in a year where we're gonna have revenue problems already, so. Thank you. What do you believe most distinguishes you from your opponent in this race? Um, you know, I bring a career of uh, experience in business and a business mindset to solving problems um, on my website and in conversation, you know, you'll know what my views are. Um, I'm pretty much known as a straight shooter and somebody that uh, is good for his word. And, um, you know, as I, um, 
as I have embodied all those things that I mentioned earlier, my work ethic, education, career, um, you know, I, I've laid it out on my website and invite voters to go there and they can kind of get a feel for what makes me tick and who I am, you know, which as a voter, when I had people knocking on my door, those are kinds of things that I looked for, you know, does this person, do I feel related or relatable? Are they relatable to me? Do they seem to embody the kind of things? Because, you know, I'm running to be a representative of them. So those qualities that I looked for, hopefully the folks uh, through this interview, as well as the information on my website, uh, they'll get a good feel for. And, um, you know, and I would invite that they look the same at my opponent as I look there. I don't see as much information, but that's, that's where Thanks. that's at. Sorry. Thank you for responding to all those questions. Sure. So it said in closing, if you want to just spend three to four minutes of a summary for your voter, for our viewers, that would be great. Okay. I, um, well, first, first of all, I want to thank, uh, thank you, Chambers, for the opportunity and the time today. <clears throat> you know, I've been out walking the neighborhoods in the district to introduce myself, and I've enjoyed the uh, many front porch conversations, listening and exchanging ideas with folks about uh, the issues that are important to them and the current events that are going on both in Kansas as well as the nation. And as a voter, as I mentioned, I've always looked for candidates that I related to, <clears throat> that I had a feel for what their positions were on the issues, but also who they are, what their background, their character, what makes them tick. And that's why I'm out knocking on doors to visit. And also hopefully through this video, uh, folks will get a feel for that. And I also invite voters to go to my website, carlturnerforkansas.com to find additional information. But as the, their state representative, I will bring reason and focus leadership to ser serving you know, I listen to folks and I look for best solutions. I'll work on common sense solutions to get our economy back on track, to restore jobs, uh, to strengthen education, improve healthcare, and just build a prosperous future for Kansas uh, and our children. So I ask for your vote on August 4th. Thank you. Thank you, Carl, for joining us today, sharing this very important information for voters in this race. As a reminder, more information for all of the candidates is available at votejoco.com. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you.